Good morning. Welcome to St. Columbus on this beautiful Sunday morning. And a special welcome to any guests or visitors here or online. We're delighted you are with us uh, for worship this morning. Uh, my name is Laurel Johnston, and I'm delighted to serve as your guest preacher and presider. I've been with you uh, for the last two, two Sundays and will be with you next Sunday as well. Uh, is there any announcements uh, from parishioners? I invite you up. Good morning. Uh, you can tell from my shirt that I am uh, Paul Amin, Amin's uh, lieutenant today. I am here to remind you that you have one week to sign up. Right now there are only five people signed up. And so if you're going to go to the Dodger night, you need to sign up soon. Uh, if you will just write a check to St. Columbus, $30 for each ticket. And uh, in the memo, memo, memo that it is for the Dodger game. So we'll see you at the Dodger Stadium in September. But right now, we need you to sign up. Thank you. Good morning. I am up here. I would like to make two announcements, but I don't have permission to make one. So I am going to announce today at Mount Cross at 1 p.m. I, I and a social worker will be speaking about palliative care and hospice. And there is sometimes confusion about that and misunderstanding. So if you have an opportunity, I invite you to attend and hear the differences between hospice and palliative care, what the difference is between hospital outpatient palliative care. Um, we will follow in September with an advanced directive and post seminar. So this is something we're trying to do jointly. Also, the faith community nurses have appreciated you filling out the questionnaires, what do we call that, a survey, and that if you haven't done that, we ask that you would do that, and we will be meeting in August to look at those surveys and see how we can move forward with that. So thank you very much. And by the way, it's good to see everybody. I feel like I haven't been here in eons. <laughs> okay. Any other announcements? Okay, you can find the written announcements in the back of your bulletin. Uh, please stand as we sing in our opening uh, hymn, uh, 518, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation. Blessed be the one and holy living God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. 
I'm from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may, pay, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson is from Hosea. God asked Hosea to perform a prophetic act in marrying a prostitute. This serves as a symbol of God's commitment to wayward Israel. Listen now for the word of God. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, go take for yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Lorahama, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lorahama, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, Name him Luami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Psalm 85. Please read together. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the inequity of your people and blotted out all their sins. You have withdrawn all your fury and turned yourself from your wrathful indignation. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Let your anger depart from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you 
prolong your anger from age to age? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O oh God, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to turn those from their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The second lesson is from Paul, the Colossians. Jesus Christ is the center of Christian faith, not ritual or discerning of spirits or rhetorical arguments. Let nothing preempt Jesus' place in life and faith. Listen now for the word of God. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy or empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him who is the head of every ruler in authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the circumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside by nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, and at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. 
So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks a door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. the name of Abba, our creator and our sustainer. Amen. Welcome to the seventh Sunday of Pentecost, a season in which we take the loving and life-giving and liberating way of Jesus on the road. It's a season that we practice walking the way. And over the past two weeks, we've explored some of the rules of the road and journeying with Jesus. We've explored the practice of mercy and kindness when we heard the parable of the Good Samaritan. And we explored the practice of real presence and hospitality with the vignette of Martha and Mary. And today we explore the practice of prayer, specifically the Lord's Prayer. We hear the disciples ask Jesus, tell us how to pray. And I wonder, has anyone ever asked you how to pray? Have you ever taught anyone to pray? Do you remember who taught you to pray? Thomas Merton sp speaks of prayer as the communion of our freedom with God's ultimate freedom the communion of our freedom with God's ultimate freedom. Annie Lamott, the author and spiritualist says, she has just two basic prayers. Help me, help me, and thank you, thank you. At the most basic level, prayer can be defined as conversation with God, both listening and talking, talking and listening. And we know that prayer is woven throughout Luke's gospel. Jesus withdraws to desert, desert, deserted places to pray. At other times, he goes to the mountaintop. Jesus prayed before he chose his disciples and when he fed the 5,000. He prayed before the night he died and from the cross itself. Prayer was part of his life, even until death. So when Jesus responds to the request from his disciples that he teach them how to pray, what he taught them is important, became important, and remains important for us today. Rooted in Jewish tradition, the Lord's Prayer follows the pattern of doxology, of praise, followed by petition. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us how to address God, how to praise God, and ask. Now, for many of us, the Lord's Prayer, apart maybe from table grace, was the first learn prayer we learned or memorized at the age of six or seven. And it's fitting that we learn this prayer at that, at that age because the prayer itself is grounded in the parent-child relationship, the father-child relationship. Jesus encourages that the disciples to call upon God using the same name he uses, Abba, the equivalent of Daddy or Papa signaling this deep personal relationship and intimacy that is to characterize the disciples' relationship with God. So he invites 
his disciples to call upon God as children, call upon a loving and trusting and present parent. Not a distant, abstract thought, but a loving, nurturing father, trusting that Abba wants, to, for, them, wants for them, wants good and life-giving things for them. So grounded in this relationship, he then invites his disciples towards awe to recognize God's transcendence, the eternal Holy One whose name is holy. Hallowed be thy name. We recognize God as a very source of holiness and seek to approach God with joyful reverence and love. And these words of praise continue with the proclamation of thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So when we ask for the coming of the kingdom, we are asking for a gift God wants to give. God's kingdom, God's reign, as you know, is characterized by shalom, this Jewish word of harmony, of right relationship between God and God's people. And we know that the word shalom, which is translated as peace, in Hebrew conveys much more. It's well-being, it's justice, it's abundance, it's fullness and wholeness of life. So this biblical vision of shalom, this vi biblical vision of God's reign speaks to the condition in which all living things are allowed to live into their potential of wholeness. God's vision, God's reign looks like we all have enough to eat, we all have access to shelter, we all have access to education, to health care, to grow into the people God created them to be. When we pray for the coming of the kingdom, we are asking for a gift God wants to give. The kingdom is revealed in Jesus, and it is something we are to pray for because God does not coerce or impose God's will upon us, but God is rather dependent on us to use our freedom to bring about God's reign. If we truly believe that it is God's reign, is good news indeed. So in reality, when we pray, we are pushing against an open door. When we pray, we are asking for gifts that God wants to give, including sustenance for life, the need for daily bread, the need for forgiveness, to forgive and to be forgiven, and for preservation. To save us from the time of trial is a prayer for protection from circumstances that can cripple or destroy the soul. So we hear in today's gospel the parable of a householder in need of bread to offer a late arriving guest. And he is successful in urging his friend to get up in the middle of the night to give him three loaves because of his shameless persistence. This is Jesus expounding upon the need and encouragement to pray. The disciples are to be persistent. They are to ask, search, and knock in prayer. For we hear Jesus' familiar words, everyone who asks receives, everyone who searches finds, for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. These familiar words remind us that Abba knows our needs, and yet the greatest gift, the greater gift Abba provides is the gift of the Holy Spirit, whose mission is to call us into bringing about God's reign. Does God hear our prayers? This is a question that many of us have asked ourselves. As a child, we may have prayed like a child, asking God, like Santa Claus, for what we want and desire. In teaching the disciples to pray, Jesus promised the answer to prayer is indeed the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that dwells within, the Holy Spirit that transforms all Godward. 
And often we know our prayers are answered when we experience a sense of peace, a peace that passes all understanding. The promise of prayer is the gift of the Spirit. The promise of prayer is Jesus praying in us and through us. And we know our prayer practice is vital when we may experience what we sometimes call the symptoms of peace. Now I will read some of these symptoms to you. These have made it around the uh, internet for at least two decades, so you may have heard this. But it's something tangible to know, to experience that the gift of the Holy Spirit is working in through you. So the symptoms of some of these of inner peace could be a tendency to think and act spontaneously rather than on fears based on past experience. The sign of peace may be an unmistakable ability to enjoy each moment, a loss of judging other people, a loss of interest in judging oneself, a loss of interest in interpreting the actions of other people, a loss of interest in conflict, the loss of the ability to worry, and this is a very serious symptom. Frequent, overwhelming episodes of appreciation and gratitude. Contented feelings of connectedness with others and frequent attacks of smiling. An increased tendency to let things happen rather than make them happen. An increased susceptibility to receive love extended by others as well as the uncontrollable urge to give love. Ask, search, knock. It will be given to you. This is God's promise. Amen. of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God's salvation is very near. Reverently and fearfully, let us pray to the Lord, saying, We call to you, O God, answer us. Make your church alive, O God, together with your risen Christ. Forgive our trespasses, erase all records that stand against us, and save us from the time of trial. We call to you, O God, answer us. By your victory on the cross, Lord Christ, you have triumphed over all things. We pray that we may witness your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. We call to you, O God. Answer us. Help us to be good stewards of your creation, that each and every person will be given their daily bread. We call to you, O God. Answer us. We pray, God, our protector, for all those with uncertain futures. Make your good purpose known, O God, in their lives. May they know that you, Father, give good gifts to your children. We call to you, O God. Answer us. Comfort and heal all those who are in pain or sorrow of any kind of trouble. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Be found, gracious God, by all those who search for you. We call to you, O oh God. Answer us. We commend to your mercy all who have died, and we thank you, gracious God, that all who are buried with Christ in baptism shall also experience the power of his resurrection. We call to you, O oh God. Amen. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the church, for our bishops Justin, Michael, and John for St. Columba's, the Threshold Project, our Children's Learning Center, our Project Hope Food Ministries, and our clergy, staff, and vestry. We pray for those with immediate needs, Thea, James, Emily, Michael, Patricia, Bethany, Colin, Allison, Barbara, Gail, Deanne, Caitlin, Lisa, Ernest, Kate, Timothy, Jillian, Deborah, Nazar, Sandy, Dory, Pauline, Sylvia, Stan, Beth, Jenny, Jennifer, Richard, Sue, Candace, Danielle, Marlene, Jen, Josette, Melissa, Gail, Sylvia, Vicki, Jerry, Gail, Jackie, Sandy, Maggie, Sandy, Denise, Robbie, Bill, Richard, Dick, Skylar, and Mona. And for those who need our continuing prayers, whose names are in our bulletin. We give thanks for all members of our St. Columbus Parish family. We pray for the world, for all who are suffering or have died because of the coronavirus pandemic for all victims of violence, and to turn the hearts of those who would do harm, for all who have suffered because of the sin of racism and oppression, for those affected by natural disasters, especially wildfires, for peace in the Middle East and all troubled areas of the world, especially Ukraine and Russia, for all those serving at home and abroad, Liam, Simon, Matthew, Matt, Nathan, Jonah, David, Noah, the London, and Marty. And we are thankful for the flowers on the high altar that are given to the glory of God by Terry Helton in celebration of Tim's 70th birthday. And now you may add your own prayers in either silence or aloud.
Almighty God, our hearts long for you, our spirits yearn for you. We desire to know your presence, we seek your face. Open our eyes to behold your coming. Cleanse our minds to accept your presence. Touch our hearts to accept your love. That we may give ourselves in love to you as you give yourself to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray together the welcoming prayer. Holy Spirit, living within us, guide our hearts and minds as we welcome today all those who worship us at St. Columbus. Give us discerning hearts so that everyone who crosses our threshold feels welcomed in the warmth of your love. Help us to perceive their needs and give us wisdom to respond knowing each person crossing our threshold is sent by you to enrich our lives. Most of all, O oh God, let this be a place where all of your children are embraced and accepted in the name of the child you sent to be our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate today? Wonderful. So I guess I will come to you. Okay, okay. Any, can you tell me your name, sir? I don't know you. Hi, Bill. And is it your birthday or anniversary? Today's your birthday. Well, happy birthday. And you are? Vito. Vito. And is. Okay, wonderful. Well, happy birthday to both of you. Let us pray the birthday blessing together. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. And the blessing of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. Thank you. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another the sign of God's peace. Peace be with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you have called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we wait the day of his coming. Lord, God of our ancestors, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Hannah, Esther, and Ruth, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presum presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, 
through Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. And now as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. The blood of Christ took on this army.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as loving members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God, Abba, our Father, our, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Seeking to live, live Christ's love in a caring and inclusive community, go in peace to love.